Uh huh. This is our theme song. Uh, I like this. And I okay. like to rap over it. Mm. I did this guitar lick, or during the guitar lick. Yeah. Anyways, name is Jason, and I like to rap. Every time I write it, I go brap brap. That's all I got. It's just <laughs> one line. Dude, that was. We great. haven't expounded on it though. That, but that's enough to keep going. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so what's up, everybody? This is Jason over at the Mini Biking Ain't Easy Podcast Studios out here live at Pay 2023. Today, as always, I have my main man, Zane, making sure that we are in the lane. I got my main camera, Bernie, Kearney Bernie. <laughs> Anyways, I got Bernie running the cameras, and today we have a special guest today. Charles from <laughs> Cars and Cameras. I forgot my name. I was about to say you're like our, you're going to be our second biggest star we've had on so far. Oh wow! I'm, I'm just because Ike went Isaac oh, yeah, went before I, yeah, you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but congrats, welcome. Well, I'm I'm honored to be here and thank you. It's definitely an interesting setup to have a, a podcast studio kind of at the, the so, paint swap meet. So help our Spotify people and people just listening. There's a bunch of ambient noise going ah, on. That's right. What do you see right now? Well, I see. A beautiful mini bike right there on display that you can win for ten dollar raffle ticket nice and there are golly there are mini bikes as far as the eye can see and there are what is it it's not junk it's just treasures everywhere <laughs> and I saw a sign out here that it perfectly described this area it's junk and disorderly <laughs> I like it. and that, yeah. that was a per, it was the perfect way to explain this is junk and you, disorderly how did you not buy that sign it was too expensive <laughs> I, inflation. I have a story about expensive signs out here. Someone yeah. said, I said, how much for this bear sign? He said 65. So we thought about it. We pulled our money, pulled out $65. And, and he meant 6500 <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And then we yep. got laughed at. And then he kept calling us Hollywood. Yeah, he kept calling. He said, go back to Hollywood with that. <laughs> and the, the thing is, is, it was good natured, but it was also like, I was not expecting that sign to be $6,500. Oh, no, no, no. And it's crazy because a lot of those ones that are that price, they're just sitting on the ground. Yeah. Like you can, been, easily step, you can easily yeah. step on them or something, but you pick it up and you look at the price tag and it's like wow i wish my grandpa hung on to all of those yeah i wish my family saved all of the trash yeah well i mean it's crazy what has become a treasure nowadays yeah but, like i bought uh i bought a rotary phone i know everybody looked at me really funny why would you buy a rotary phone if you can't even use it well it's it brings back memories of like my grandparents house when i would sneak down to the basement and go play with the phone and they could hear it chinging and they would they would get you know they'd be like charles get back up here <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what happened to that phone after they passed away and the house got cleaned out. When I saw it, I was just like, I thought of my grandparents. Uh, someone's probably selling it here at Pate right now. No, I already picked, <laughs> I already picked it up. Oh, the one, yeah. The same one. So, hey, hey. <laughs> while you're out there, other than looking for rotary phones and Yeah, signs, I know. I, I got a weird, I got a weird, yeah, I, I look for anything. Are there actual projects you're looking for to like bring back home? We kind of like to start with either tires or an engine. Because usually when you kind of lay it all out, that's when the build starts to come together. Kind of like the lawnmower. We yeah. bought a mower and set the yeah. hood, the engine, and the tires, and we're like, okay, we like we like the look, and it's low. We like this. Okay. You know, a lot of people will build stuff on, like, CAD or, like, you know, on the computer, and we're just like, we just lay stuff Actual on. Actual parts just, on Yeah, the we ground. just lay stuff on the ground. We're like, nah, get that out of there. Try something different. But, I mean, we... We were looking for one thing in particular, a, a tachometer cable for the mower, because I put the tack on there and everything, and the cable was broken on the center. So Did you find it? I don't think we're going to find a, okay. a Kawasaki well, 450, know. but I mean, with as much stuff out here, I'll bet you that there is one. You never know. It's just going to be tough to find, or it's going to be on a complete bike, and you know they don't want to sell just the yeah. tack cable yeah. off of it. I don't know. I mean, those... I'm looking at a set of auto, like what are those auto cycles? Yeah, you guys have a few of those. We have those, like two of them. Yeah, that, what's that's, an auto cycle? Bicycle a, looking frame. It's oh. a, yeah, it's oh. like a motorcycle slash. Those I, are kind of cool. Looking. Yeah, I like. Looks those. like a looks like a World War II bike or something. That's it. Yeah, what are yeah. the Enfields or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got uh, tires and wheels. I saw. We did. We found. Well, you know. I guess not really a sneak peek, but you guys will see it in an up and coming video. We found some new wheels, some junior dragster wheels for the front of our, uh, the green dragster, the turbo yeah. methanol one yeah, that we yeah. have. So hopefully the, the front wheels will be a lot lighter. I mean, cause the ones you guys gave us, they're gorgeous. And we got, we keep putting them on different setups and everything. Yeah. It's like, 
we finally have these really skinny aluminum wheels. I think we're going to stick them on that and leave them there. And, Let them be. And, and Taylor was looking at them, and he was trying to figure out how to put one of those on the front of a mini bike for drag <laughs> racing. I'm like, I don't blame you. If you need sizes off of it, we'll, we'll mic it out and send it to you. That would be pretty sweet. It would need two bearings on oh. both sides or whatever. But Oh, yeah, because uh, that one's only just one because then it has like a little cap yeah. at the end. So actually, I want to talk a little bit more about the lawnmower because Ike was telling us that you, like some kind of elf or eagle man, you guys were driving through oh, the woods, that's right. and you just like you saw a tree and a glint of metal, and you're like, oh hey, there's a lawnmower out there. Yeah. So hey. tell us about that. Well, okay, so my my experience is when when the summertime ends and the green leaves start to fall, and you can see into the woods, and you know you, you can kind of peer in, and, you know, abandoned properties, barns, and stuff show up where you've driven past there and you've never seen them before. Yeah. yeah. And we were looking to rent a new house out of town kind of in the country and I come around this bend and I can see in the corner there's an old pole barn and I see the the hood and the fender of just what it is a tractor and I stop and I back up and I'm looking at it and I'm like okay well we got an appointment to get to this house yeah and I just kept it in the back of my mind and I shot the idea to John he's like well that mower sounds pretty good for what we're looking at and Ike had one but it was a little too big but it was still oh, okay. old but not as old as this one John told me he's like go get the mower so I went there went to the property checked it out took some pictures of it and I just started going to the closest houses to there and I was like who owns that property because <laughs> Because in that, in that town, if you start poking around on someone else's property, you might have something fly at you really fast <laughs> yeah, and really gonna... small. I knew to go and ask who owned it, and I went from house to house, and I think the last house that I got to, they were like, go check that house. I think they know who owns it. This lady comes out from the back with a Rolodex. She's got, she's flipping through it, and she pulls out the card, and it's got the gentleman's name, his number, and his address, and she's like, here you go. Wow. And that's old school, you know. You're, you can't you're like a detective, it. man. I, yeah, it, I felt like I was going a little too far just to get a mower. <laughs> but I wanted to do it right. I mean, I could have just easily, like, this is going to sound bad, but I could have just loaded it up and no one would have said anything. But we know, I know, and every all of you should know that that is not the way you need to do it. Yeah. Do, do it the way I did it. Find the owner because he was really nice and he thought it was cool that we wanted it. And you know what? He wanted $20 for it. Oh, Whoa. nice. That's a steal. Like, right we, there. we were literally, we came with hundreds of dollars thinking that he was going to think, like, if he still wanted it or whatever and he didn't want to part with it. He was just like, that old thing? $20. Like he, wow. yeah, I, he might have given it to us, but you know, we didn't want to do that. No, that's we, really we cool. We wanted though. to pay him. He for sounds it sounds like he was really cool about it, yep. and he's interested in people carrying it forward, I, doing something with you it. You know, and, and he told us a story. You know, there's some parts that we've moved from the mower to the new mower that his dad made to hold the hood down, like with the old lathe back in like I guess it would have been the 70s or something. Wow. Yeah, so okay. Just stuff like that. You know, it, you get something old like that, and you you hear the whole story. And he was like, this, you know, I've had a lot of mowers in my day, but this one, I never bogged it down. Nothing could slow this mower down. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. All right. And now nothing is going to slow it down because no, no. that thing is mean. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think the only thing that might slow it down is us not having it running like 100% right now because oh, okay. not having mufflers. It's no back pressure, and it's, it's it's a little finicky, but honestly, it's not too bad for a week's worth of work. And uh, that normally would have taken us, I think, three weeks. And thank you for y'all because you guys got us the parts out like that. Nice. I mean, it was... We had the idea, we pitched it, and then within a couple days we had this big old box of everything we needed to put that thing together, and it wouldn't be here without y'all. So, yeah, man. Well, I, no, I'm glad you're out here and oh put that gosh, cool yeah. thing together. I'll definitely remember that forever. <laughs> trying, trying, to, <laughs> trying to get the mower going. It was nine to six, and you know, a little bit extra after each day, and yeah. we were like, oh, it's gonna be running today. Not today. <laughs> well, we have one of our, I guess one of your Instagram followers wanted us to ask you a question oh, on this okay. note, which is, what has been your favorite car that you have built so far? Or favorite go-kart vehicle? Yeah. vehicle. Okay. okay. Um, and why? Hmm. That comes from Tyrannosilus Rex. Yes. Oh, I know. Uh, that's Bobby. Okay. That's Bobby? Bo Bobby and Big Bob. A little go-kart <laughs> Yeah, dude. Uh, the Tyrannus boys. Okay. Yeah. I guess... My favorite, my favorite build, and it, I mean, it, it incorporates, the, uh, you might think it's biased, but it, it incorporates the engine that I acquired before I even worked for Cars and Cameras. It was a big block, 10 horse Briggs that we mounted longitudinally. I think I said that word right. So the, so the blower housing isn't on the side, it's up front. Okay. And we used a magic box to get the gearing back to the rear wheel, and it's just a big block 
vintage mini bike that we had to cut and stretch and get the engine just barely fitted in there. It's not the most awesome project, but I feel like Ike and I really, we really had to do some head scratching to get that thing to work by ourselves. And it turned, it, it seemed like we built something very unique, but uh, we later looked up that I think there was a vintage mini bike brand called the Tote Goat yeah. that yeah. did that back in the day with the longitudinal yeah. engine. So we weren't first, but we were second. Yeah. So I mean, you, you were know. first in a while. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, honestly, that bike would have looked really cool out here. I mean, just just the engine the wrong way yeah, makes yeah. you go. Wait huh? a second. How does okay. this, gonna, yeah, how's this work? We'll, we'll put a link. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that somewhere. video somewhere. If you want to check out the video that I'm talking about, if you go on Cars and Cameras, look up the Sidewinder. Side, that's that's okay. that's what the mini bike was called, and I think we even sold little Briggs and Stratton uh, cutouts, the metal oh, nice. Sidewinder things. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and we signed those. I, I remember one was messed up, and I misspelled "oops" and I wrote "ops," <laughs> and the dude brought it to an event, and he was like, "You got to sign this, dude. This is so funny." I'm like, "Ops." O P P S. Is that yeah. what you? Yeah. <laughs> so he was like, "What are you in the black ops or something?" I was like, "No, I just with two P's." Yes. So every time I make a mistake, I always say "ops." Oh, nice. So if you if okay. you hear me, that's the backstory on that. Cool, man. Part two of that question was, what's your favorite color? My favorite color. Mm. Right now, since with the with the bike that we just you know been building is uh, anodized purple. Or oh, ha oh. hammer, like anything hammered paint. I don't oh, know. It's yeah. like that textured. I like those. I, I like those. I've got this Briggs and Stratton uh, flathead with one of the tins on the side, and it's hammered purple, and it's like you can feel the the dimples in it and stuff. It's a beautiful paint. It's like tuxedo black with purple laid over it, and it's all oh, messed up. Okay. I, and it's from the 80s, and I, I've I've always wanted to replicate that, and I did some things. The the anodized purple spray paint at like AutoZone. Any of Go Power Sports billet parts, if you paint that with that anodized, it pops like it actually was dip. Oh, it so might not last, but it looks so good. I've painted any every, pretty much everything on that bike purple, including the sprocket. Nice. And it looks great. We need for Pulse Start Picnic, we need to get that bike against uh, purple rain. We need to find someone. Yeah, with I mean now rain. now you know, keep it on the DL, but the bike I'm talking about is for dirt. Oh. We we haven't really built we, I think John and Ike did build a drag bike for the road. Oh, okay. And that was a couple years ago, and I think it's still somewhere, but we don't actually have a drag bike. We have uh, we have a couple things for the dirt, but, I mean, that's anybody that's been to our Mini Mayhem events knows that we like to run the, we like to run the drag strip out there. And usually our bikes are out front, not to, you know, talk too much smack, but, you know, go, go Power Sports make sure that we, uh, <laughs> we you know, they're up front. That's, yeah. that's the way they want it. You know, it's like, hey, how's that bike so fast? Go power sport. You so you got mini mayhem, yep. which is also I you got dirty thirty coming yep, up. Yep, my dirty thirty. That would uh, be I guess my thirtieth birthday. Uh, and my birthday is actually on May 9th, but the scheduling didn't work out. So our events on May thirteenth. It's a one day. It's Saturday. We will be there that Friday evening before. So I think we're staying one night. Mm. But Saturday is going to be all about the fans and just riding around, trail riding, racing, and stuff like that. I've got a special gift for a good fan, a good fan of mine that did something really special for me when I lost all my tools. Uh, so I just got something to give back to him. Uh, That's nice. So, man. you know, I don't want anybody to feel left out that I didn't give them something, but it's this, this is a close friend of mine, and the only time I'm going to be able to see him is at Mini Mayhem. So we're just, we'll, we'll do it, you know, behind the scenes, but he knows who he is. He's, okay, gotcha. Mysterious, shout, mysterious. Yeah, well, no, uh, yeah. I, guess, I guess it would be Dune Buggy Dave. He shout knows. out to Dune Buggy Dave. Shout out Dune Buggy Dave. <laughs> Thanks for being a good guy and taking care of Charles. Oh, he's, and for him to do something like that to me, because months prior, he had his shop burned down, and he lost oh, no. everything. He had all of his son's bikes and go-karts and stuff, so I've got something for him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of him. Nice, man. Because I got a son, and I honestly can't wait to start building stuff with him, and if we built something together, that's priceless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for something like that to take it away... He didn't deserve that. Oh, autograph? oh, autograph. We have the crowd. They're bum rushing hey. Charles right now. Crowd. Whoa, whoa. Slow down, whoa. guys. Slow down. Fans. Single file line. We'll be here for three hours afterwards to, to sign autographs. Nicely done. All right. All right. All right. Now go ahead. It's like, don't it. interrupt me when I got my signing going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> got to point you, you in the right direction. Like. Yeah. <laughs> sure, uh, I would love to sign your baby. So. We so can... I just... <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, 
So the last question we have, I guess so we, we already answered it, right? What, the uh, the drag bike thing? Yeah. Or, well, well, I mean, we could, we could go more into it. We do have a spot that we could start running on the asphalt, but it would be either the Farmington Dragway or Piedmont. They do allow mini bikes. It's just we haven't gotten to that level yet. And we oh, don't, we okay. Can, gotcha. And I guess I could run some of my off-road bikes on the drag strip, but I'm honestly a little worried about losing control on, you know, if I got knobby tires. Yeah, And I'm on you. that slick surface not so sure because i mean we've we've built them pretty much all for the dirt and that's what we have access to and it just works out and it's it's, it's pretty fun i mean you can get almost eight wide racing out at, out out at busco at, yeah out at busco beach so it, and it's it's so much fun and it's just an honor system there's no one there with an actual timer no no okay. no and usually there's a spectator that will kind of come over and stand in the middle and they'll you know they'll point at everybody make sure everybody's ready and then down yeah and i guess you just run to the end of the guardrail or a little bit further but when you start seeing the jumps of the the kitty track at the end, you need to you need to start hitting the brakes because you're going into the woods or where the garbage cans are. Okay. With the go fast parts I got, I need to I need to make sure that my front brake and rear brake are working great. Yeah. But with those hydraulic setups on that uh, Mega Moto 212, mm -hmm. pretty you, sweet. Night and day difference between the drum brakes because those <laughs> that drum brake once that thing gets hot, it's it's kind of sketchy. Cooking out there. Oh yeah. I want to go back in time. What did you do before Cars and Cameras? Oh boy, okay. So I was a full-time mechanic, just above a lube tech. Uh, I was, you know, I guess you could call me a parts changer. I wasn't really into diagnostics, but I could do some of the older stuff. But when it came to that big old scan tool and what to press, it was, eh, it was like trying to teach a dog cursive. So I <laughs> just didn't work out. <laughs> we up? have a fan here. Oh, another fan. Oh, another fan. We got another Turn fan. it on. <laughs> Is that all you gotta do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sample. Thanks. Uh, but, huh? You're famous, right? Yes, Super I think famous. so. I I don't know. I did. I don't know if I'm famous. Like I said before in a video, I'm just a regular guy that <laughs> happens to have cool friends. There you go. You know, and I'm just more than lucky oh. to be able to do this. Do, they, do you guys want to come over here real quick? Dude, yeah. hop yeah, come on, on in. Hop Get on in, in here. Come Get in, in here, man. Just watch some chords. Yeah. Yes. Just careful of the chords, but hop over here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. The millions of fans. All right, all right. <laughs> All Sorry, right. Nice Have a good you. one, man. Be good. Brief, brief intermission. Had to take a Polaroid. Oh, dude. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice what's, what's your name? Matthew. Matthew. All right. Shouts Thanks for out to Matthew. Thanks yeah. for watching the channel, dude. So what we just did was we have a oh, one more. new a new aged Polaroid camera, like say, the 2023. Yeah. Didn't you say you got like 30 of these or something? Uh, we bought two. We bought 200. 200. 200. Yeah, photos. Oh, 200 photos, not yeah, 200 like the, cameras. Nice no, no, we have one camera. No, no, but, it's a, oh. it's, yeah, you, like, you can okay. load it yeah. in. I thought you were passing this thing out to everyone. No, no, it's you got a 10 round magazine for the camera. Slap that thing in there, you got 10 photos. And But you can't share these socially? They're just physical. They're just physical it. copies. Okay. So it's kind of like a souvenir for the fans. Like if they, I mean, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody's got pictures, stuff like that. But when you actually get to hold the picture, I no, feel like it's it's different. There's something about having one of those photos, because actually like I, I printed out one that I keep in my, uh, one, like in my notebook. Mm -hmm. I keep one in there on my daughter. Cause it's, oh, yeah. I, it's nice. It's like I have I phones think, of her on my phone. I think I, I took it out. Yeah, I didn't want my wallet to destroy it, but I have the one of my wife and kid in there. Oh. That's nice, man. Yeah. All I'm, right. So I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors, Polaroid, I believe. <laughs> yes. And we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> okay. Zane, have you seen the nitrogen shock around? Thanks. This is Jason over here at Go Power Sports, and today we are showing you the high performance billet shock from Go Power Sports.
tabs. This is 11 inches from mounting hole to mounting hole. This will hold a 10 millimeter bolt. So here at the shop, we put these shocks on just about anything we can. Right here, we have it on a Megamoto 80 frame. This is customized. We have our own little swing arm that we've created that will be available soon. These are an adjustable preloaded spring, so you can adjust how hard or soft you want your ride to be. These are nitrogen filled from the factory. Now these are exclusive at gopowersports.com. Make sure to pick up a pair of these nitrogen shocks and we'll get them shipped straight to you. Later. All right, and we're back. You had a few questions for him, Zane, didn't you? Oh yeah, I did. So when did you start working with cars and cameras? I think it would be, was it 20, 2019 or 2020? Okay. No, no, I, golly, man, my phone's Before ringing. Before shutdown, after shutdown? It was after shutdown, okay. or mid shutdown. Mid shutdown. I, okay, yeah. mid shutdown. So, okay, but you've been riding on mini bikes and go-karts and stuff before that. Mm -hmm. So what was your first bike or go-kart, and what's your favorite bike or okay. go-kart? My first go-kart that I ever got, I acquired it from a few friends of mine, and the seat had rusted out, so we cut some of uh, a go-kart that was really bad, the seat section, and welded it into this one. From there, I went to, that was like back in the day when you could go get an engine for a hundred bucks at Harbor Freight with the coupon. Yeah. Sometimes $89, <laughs> slap that thing on there. And really, that was like the first time that I'd ever like struggled with hooking up throttle cables and stuff. And, and you go on YouTube and that was like right in the start of in, like how to on go-kart yeah. stuff so I, and I think that was the first time I ever found cars and cameras didn't really know who they were but I also you know remember seeing Redbeard's videos and, and other guys and stuff like that so it was it was helpful to see that stuff and I just remember using those videos to actually help my projects and you know it's it's funny now that like you know now that I'm into this I'm finding out that my first go-kart I think Tim's family used to yeah, be partnered them. with so I had a clipper cart and I'm not sure when it was made. I think it was like late 90s. But the only information I could find on it was that it was recalled because the live axle was exposed. Oh. And kids with long hair or hoodies get would get it up. wrapped up behind them. So they had to be recalled and have a sleeve put over the axle. And mine had the sleeve. Oh, so I was like, okay, okay, well, mine was recalled and repaired. And the only reason I knew it was a clipper cart was because the front pedals had rubber sheathing over it that said clipper cart. Heck yeah. So I, nice, and man. I'd, I'd really like to find that style again, or at least, you know, but it was funny because I sold that to a friend of mine. It got stolen from him, and then someone else found it in the woods, spray painted, and they put it up on Marketplace for like 50 bucks, and I bought it back. Wow. So, so it, you have so it, it now? I don't have it now. Oh, I yeah. ended up selling it to get a four-wheeler, and then sold the four-wheeler to get rims from, or tires from my truck. It was... <laughs> God, but well, guess what? We found that car, oh, Clipper car. Right come on out, come on out, <laughs> Clipper car. <laughs> no, but I, I, no, I'm, I'm, you know, and maybe someone out there listening right now probably has it. It's a Clipper cart, and the floorboard and side panels are expanded steel. Okay. So it's, it's a one, like I made the side panels in my metal fab. Kind class. of a one of a one yeah, of a that, thing. Yeah, that was the first and last time I ever bought a go kart to school because when I got to done, <laughs> yeah, to school actually to weld it up, and they were like. Yeah, drive it back to your truck. <laughs> so every bit of gravel, I was slinging it and nice. drifting and doing Teacher donuts. said I can do this. <laughs> and I didn't think about it, but I was going behind the, the new building, and all the classrooms had their windows open. Nice. And all the teachers and all my friends could see me doing that. Before I got it loaded up, they told me never to bring it back. No, you probably uh, got applauded by everyone. Oh, everyone yeah, no. I was, the, there, was the there was definitely some jealous people like, let me get a ride. <laughs> but... I, you know, that was that was my little go kart, yeah. and that's how you got recruited. They found that that footage, and <laughs> yeah. cars and cameras had the to security have footage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then after that go kart, I think it was uh, a marketplace find. I found a Sears Roper roller yes. with no motor, and the only reason I got it was because I saw it online, and I had go karts and I had spare stuff. And I'm like, well, I've got everything I think I need to get that mini bike running. So within by the next day, I was riding that around my neighborhood. Nice. on dry rotted tires and stuff and nice, so it, it was really it was really cool and i think i ordered something from y'all to help me fix that some one of the vintage style throttle cables yeah. or something yeah because it was a very unique handlebar size was it like a one inch i think it was a one, 
something or seven eight one, one of the weird ones bigger yep. yeah i've even had a mini bike where the handlebar they cut it and put a smaller pipe on it so they could oh. yeah i'm like oh man <laughs> so oh well so what's uh what is your favorite bike Ooh. or fa yeah favorite vehicle for you personally well it depends because i have i guess for favorite vintage style i would say like the sears bikes sears and roebuck okay I'm, for some reason i'm a sears mini bike guy but for the new ones I, i'd have to go with the Trailmaster hurricane okay because that that bike i swear and it's ready to run form the way you guys sell it or yeah. modified but just right out right off the showroom floor if you've been mini biking you will be so excited when you get on that. We race around the Cars and Cameras Motorplex and we have different variety of bikes and you can see where, which ones different, uh, differ in performance. Like that bike can corner so much better and carry the speed through the corner better than a hardtail bike. Yeah. But then when you go, you get to the straightaway, that hardtail bike might be geared different, so then it pulls away. So it all it all balances out. But mm. just the hurricane, I mean, cause we, that's that's like the, the heavily pushed bike for the 180. Yeah. And to see all of those make it, like basically make it through that race, it's like, okay, well, if they can do that, yeah. it should be able to handle normal riding for, you know, cause three hours of us beating the heck out of those things, that's like the, probably the worst conditions for those bikes yeah. that they'll ever have. <laughs> Unless you're riding it without an air filter or something, something even dumber. But, oh, no, you know, or going up a mountain in Colorado or something, I, like whatever. You know, that, but that was fun. That was, that, yeah. that was, we were making memories, guys. Yeah. So, so how does the Hurricane compare to the Mega Moto 212 you, you guys have been modifying here lately? Ah, I mean, really, really, they're basically the same bike. It's just different ground clearance and, like I said before, versus a hard tail and a soft tail. I, like, my first big bike was one of those, the, the Coleman CT200. Yeah, uh, was you, that your yeah, Dirt Hog? The Is Dirt that, Hog, yeah. yes. And that's the bike that really uh, ruffled some feathers out at the last Mini Mayhem. What do they're, you mean? What happened? I was just, they were like, how did you pass me? Or how were you out front? Because like I was trying to catch a group to go race and they were at the line and I'm in the staging area and they go. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna go. And I passed them like they were standing Whoa. still. And they, you know, I had a few people come up and they're like, what did you do? Like, and I just told them the list of everything that you guys have and it's all online stuff. And then just little head work, you know, but if, if you're modifying an engine, you may or may not know how to modify a head. Or if you don't, you guys sell modified, we got some you guys sell modified heads. Yeah. yeah you so if you're if you're worried about ruining your cylinder head, you can keep your stock one, buy a performance one, and then try and mess with your stock one on you know in the off yeah. time. But I mean, if I, you if you need that, you better call Paul. You better call Paul because he's <laughs> yeah. he's the guy. And if you're talking about heads, you ha I know that you were looking into those MoFlo heads. Oh, did yes. you ever get your hands on one? No comment. Okay. No comment. We can't. Yeah. No, but I have. We have been looking at the uh, those all billet moflo heads and i think i think we've even gone a little step further than, oh, okay because i think you guys sell them in the regular like the big valve and then the really big valve yes. i think we went super big yeah like they're touching <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> i think the exhaust valve is a big intake valve or no it's one or the other like uh, the exhaust valve is the big intake valve for a regular head wow. uh -huh. I'm like oh okay all right tons of power then <laughs> lots of flowage Nice. Mo, mo flow. Yeah, mo flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you've also been testing out the stage 1.5 performance kits. Ah, absolutely. What are your feelings on that? I feel like that was how I started my dirt hog project. It was it started with a stage one, stage two, or something like that. But the stage 1.5 gives you the performance carburetor or not, but it gives you the longevity in your engine. The, bi okay. the billet rod and it's, it's, the, it's, it's the billet rod, the, the cam, the cam and the carburetor. Yeah, because or, you don't need heavier springs in the skeleton. Right. Yeah. Yep, because they, I think, yeah, they already come with 18, 18 pound valves. I think or more, 20. I think I'm it's the double deuce. 22 to 24, okay. somewhere, depending on when nope. you get that engine, yeah, yeah it's that, around. No, that makes yeah. sense, because I think when I, when I said 18, I was thinking for the first yeah. upgrade yeah. of valve springs from the stock ones. But those yeah. those Tillisons, they, they already come with a really solid valve train. I tell you what, as fast as my bike was, it was on a stock cylinder head. Yeah. No ratio rockers or nothing. So <laughs> it was like a rocket ship. Okay. But do you have a newer bike than that, Coleman? 
Okay. No still, comment. Okay. No comment. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, you're good. No, no, you're not. It's fine. I also saw you made a comment on a Coleman bike, 200 bike, that had rear suspension added to it. Ah, yes. Are you interested in rear suspension on that bike? Absolutely. I, I was. I really liked what you guys have. I mean, the the bolt on the bolt on kit, and you guys took a like a pole and wanted to know how many people or how many of your customers have welders and it seemed like a lot of them don't have welders so yeah. that bolt-on setup is it's very easy and when it is bolted on if you have a buddy with a welder if you don't trust you know you're like okay it's bolted on just get it get it welded on get it get it tacked in there where you can get a grinder to it and take it back off if you had to but it's just a little bit of reassurance that it's not going to move but yeah. i guarantee you the way that they've designed it it's it's like you guys have triangulated it so where it can't move like exactly. it can't go up it can't go out yeah. uh, the boys in the in the research and development part department at go power sports they're doing a great job yeah they're doing a great job yeah. we'll make sure to throw them a pizza party shout out oh yeah, yeah definitely shout well, out you know the, you know when work's the really R &D hard boys. Yeah. pizza party always yeah. makes it better yeah because we're all family <laughs> olive garden no i thought it was uh there was a clown meme Oh and yeah, you get a pizza party, but we're all family. We're all fa okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your favorite series that you guys have done so far? Ooh, that's honestly, I don't think uh, my favorite series. I wasn't even a part of. Really? Yep. It's uh, it's the boys building the rat rod wagon. I thought that that was such a roller coaster of stuff that they had to go through, and then they finally just were like, "This is it. We find it's it came together." And I really enjoyed, like, just like everybody watching here, I was a fan of cars and cameras, and all I did was show up to one of their events and just didn't bug John. I just handed him my number, not saying anybody bugs him, but I just went up to him, handed him my name and number, and was like, "Hey, man, if you ever need any help with the next event, I'm all yours." Yeah. And he messaged me over Facebook and realized I wasn't, you know, a bad guy. So the first time I ever pulled up to his dad's house, it was like, I I, I've it. seen this place. <laughs> yeah. Where, where's like, that chicken at? Is it going to yeah, attack yeah. me? <laughs> or Jeb the Bush. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Jeb the Bush. No, it was just, it was kind of surreal to just be pulling up on like where you've watched all these videos on that one road of them ripping yeah. down. And when you get there, you're like, now I see why the, they ran you out of this town. This is a beautiful neighborhood. <laughs> Just causing a ruckus. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same thing when I go back to my hometown, like where my parents live. I grew up in that neighborhood ripping mini bikes and four wheelers around since I was probably 14 years old. Mm. And all my neighbors were either, oh, there goes Charles. You know what I mean? And they think it's funny that I do that for a living now. And when I come back, they're actually waving at me when I ride by. Nice. Before they were like, you know, not really mad at me, but <laughs> These they, didn't, meddling kids. they didn't enjoy it. Now it's like, oh, well, there's Charles. He's doing what he does for a living. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not really made it, but I guess he's, he's a professional he's hooligan he's now. Happy. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. ha I'm happy with what I'm doing. I mean, it's not every day that you get to wake up and like, well, I got to go build a mini bike. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's not bad at all. You know, yesterday, Isaac actually said his favorite build was that rat rod wagon. Yep. Yeah. It's nostalgic. I, I don't know what, it, it just looks too dang cool. Yeah. I mean, and it does, it's kind of small in comparison to like the mower. So like if we set it out here amongst all the bikes, it's so low and small, it kind, it really doesn't stand out like the Cozy Coop or yeah. the mower or some other flashy project. I just think that the rat rod wagon was just a, like a, kind of the, the I, I don't know, I don't, lack of a better word, like the patina of the custom go-kart. You know, like they yeah. built it fully custom, but they made it look rusty and old, like they actually found it the way that it was. So I, I don't know if we're ever gonna build anything better than that. We can just try and match it or yes. just, you know, keep moving forward, but we don't need to try and- You know what, man, dare to dream. It. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you guys will make Rat Rod 2. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe a bigger version. But I guess the bigger version was the Cozy Coupe because it's oh, like yeah. the geometry same. It's just a different engine and different drivetrain. Okay. And then the the first project that I was ever involved with was the uh, the cross car. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like I think the first time I ever got invited there to work and like build stuff was when we 
got to ride the cross cart for the first time. Is that the white looking yep. go cart? Okay. Yeah, the, the Stormtrooper okay. thing. And, if, and sadly, nothing's wrong with it. It's just parked under the carport, and I think we borrowed the front tires for a project. Oh. And oh, it is no. ready to go, running. It's it's perfect, but it just need we just need to put the front tires back on it and rip it. But it's one of those like it's easier to hop on a mini bike or a go kart than it is to like get that thing ready to go. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of finicky and stuff. Yeah. So after that cross cart, so what has been the most difficult build so far? Hmm. I guess. I, I wouldn't say it's like the most difficult, but it, it's definitely the most challenging because we're all new at it. Ike knows about drag racing, but I think with the turbo 670 methanol dragster that we have, that is, we're all into new, you know, we're all stepping into new waters with that. I mean, and going off the map. Yep. And uh, I don't know if we've mentioned it. I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek if we haven't. We're going fuel injected on that thing. Nice. Oh, and and we cool. have sent an engine out to a guy that's fabricating all of the, the sensors and like a different intake and a throttle body and then the intake plenum that's like a box that like from the turbo it goes to like this container looking thing and then it divides the air and fuel because that's what we were having an issue with is our car draw through carburetor and basically it was getting it the venturi effect i think that's the, the proper term and it was like the fuel and air were choosing a cylinder it was only going to the front cylinder or to the back cylinder it wasn't getting evenly dispersed so okay. that's that's what basically kind of halted our drag rail situation I, I hope i'm not saying too much no, but we're, we're we're working on it i mean it's not like i'm telling anybody that we've given up on it it's in the process like that if that dragster is your favorite project it's coming back and even better so who's your guru because so once you get into the 670 and methanol who are you guys relying on hmm. i guess <laughs> ourselves and yeah, okay. <laughs> denial and error okay I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys go to forums, you guys got yeah, performance like it, 670, you it'd guys be forum, call, And then one of our engine guys, and it's, you know, we've, we've got better call Paul. Yeah. But he's our, you know, he's our small block guy. Yeah. We have a few people that we know of that are like into the car racing community, and that would be the Stooge. Can't name drop him yet. You know, he, he hasn't told me that, but he's really into racing like multi hundred, like couple hundred thousand dollar race cars yeah. daily, and he is a, a driving coach. And I'm hoping he'll teach my son how to drive. Nice. But nice. no, he's, he's kind of our helping hand when it comes to drag racing and if there's math or formulas involved they get together That's, I stay out of that I'm just you know I just turn wrenches okay nice man I mean hey, I barely made it out of algebra one in yeah. high school so now is your son mechanically inclined like you how old is your son too uh, he's a year and a half so yes he's, he's done he's already, he's already built a mini bike he's working with NASA right now uh, <laughs> I t he definitely like I've I've got him like one of those wooden tool sets. Yeah. He like he likes the wrench and the and the fake screwdriver and stuff. But he'll always like anything I'm doing. He'll go over there and hit it with the screwdriver. He, he's got a. Yeah, if you guys have kids, you know they they're copycats. They yeah. anything you do, they're like I want to do it too. Especially whatever you say. So. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got the. I don't know where he got it from, but anything happens to him that's like kind of unfortunate. He goes, Oh me, oh me. <laughs> he doesn't go ops. No, he doesn't okay. say <laughs> That's next. <laughs> but yeah, he's got the oh man and the and when you tell him no, he's like, no, 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 no. Two, the terrible twos are coming. For yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break. I okay. want to hear more about these terrible twos <laughs> after this message at, from our sponsors. Not Polaroid this time. <laughs> Hey, Jason, everything good? You want us to come back, man, or? How? I'm trying to get these people to figure out how good of a deal this Rascal Light is. Well, you, you tell them it's a super cost-effective kit. Plus, it's a complete mini bike for under 500. Yeah, da, 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 da. I want these people to feel this deal. Deal. A great deal. Hey, maybe we should go get some fresh air. Yeah, go get some fresh air. Okay. Any ideas yet? Got it. O -M -W. Good at what I do. O -M -W. O -M -W. 
so, what do we think? And we're back. <laughs> Go ahead, Zane. So what have you learned in your time working as a professional YouTuber? What has that transition been like? Very strange. And I mean that in a good way. Just just because if you go from like a nine to five job and you watch YouTube in your off time, but now you're involved in it. And I guess I could say like we're influencers, so yeah, to speak. I mean, you that, are, for sure. Yeah, uh, How many autographs have you signed this this weekend so far? Or just Enough. this podcast. Just yeah. during this podcast. Yeah. And, I, and, I'll, sign, I and I'll sign more. I don't. It, yeah. There could be a line. I'll stay here all well, night. If we were to take the barricade down, you would be bum rushed. <laughs> okay, come on, Bernie. You're Bernie. killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> reality no uh it's taught me a lot like you know in my old job it was kind of get it done get it out get paid for it because there's a customer waiting this it's we sometimes are in a hurry but it's more relaxed it re and and when i came into the job i was gung-ho and i had like all this you know i was just so fast at trying to do everything real quick and it's like you need to kind of slow down and make sure we record everything and it's Every step of the process, we need to make sure that we film so you you guys get all the goods. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yeah, when there's something that doesn't get filmed and it's, you know, something happens and it's like, well, we have no way to explain it, it creates this weird void in the video that we yeah. really try and avoid. Absolutely. So, I mean, and it's, it's taught me, like, I guess my kid has taught me patience, but I'm still trying to work on that. I mean, I think everybody is. But <laughs> I know where you're at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, you're going to find that you have both a, a deeper well of patience than you ever expected and a shorter trigger than you could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, it's, I get frustrated very easily. And sometimes, like John has told me, he's just like, hey, man, it's not, you know, it's nothing to get yeah. too upset about. And, he, and I'm like, you're right. Thanks, thanks for bringing me back down to reality, and not, I'm not overthinking. And it's a good pro like we got a good friendship there, you know. Yeah. Like he, and, and it's not like I'm like this ticking time bomb or anything, but it's it's like if we see each other struggling with something, we help each other out. John definitely seems like a calming influence. Just having hung out with him a couple of times, he's, he's a good guy. I would pretty much do anything for him, and I would trust him with my life. Nice. So and do on a regular basis. Yeah, I do actually, yeah, for real. And they trust me with their lives because yeah. I drove a couple hours in that bus with yeah. them sleeping in the back. I'm like, I have the entire cars and cameras in my hands. Yeah, right I now. have one million subscribers. Just right. Don't me. mess up. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all I was like. Everything is relying on me right. Now, uh, what advice do you have for someone who wants to get into YouTube or TikTok or any of those things? You know, where it's like you're kind of creating content while building stuff. What what advice do you have for them? Be yourself. Oh, very good. Not, you don't. I mean, I, I kind of like accidentally I used some jokes and one one liners from another influencer that I wa watched, and I'm just not going to say any names or not give any scenarios, but. I was saying things that is on a different channel, yeah. and people called me out for it. Oh, and they didn't, one and of they those did. Chris Rock things you started no. doing a Chris Rock stand up. On. No, no, okay. uh, no, no. I was. I, I think. Well, okay. I thought you were gonna so, say he, like he got slapped by. No, Will no, Smith. no. no uh, that's yeah. No, no uh, so I was basically. Everybody knows Vice Grip Garage, Derek. He's a funny guy. I was making jokes about some cars that, you know, when we did our first car, I was making some jokes that were similar to his channel, and people did not like me doing that. Wow. And yeah. I almost think that he responded, in, well, never mind. But I'm just glad he didn't get mad at so me. So you're ready, ready to bury the so, hatchet? So I, you know, oh, yeah. Well, Anyways, Derek, Derek, come Derek, on Derek, out. Come on out. <laughs> yeah, Derek, Derek, you're still my best friend, and I love you, and your jokes are hilarious, and I still watch your content. So I don't I don't want any hard feelings if there ever was any. And I, I don't even think he knows who I am, but I got a signed sticker from him, so nice. in my truck. But, yeah. But, no, I find what, like, makes the channel, like, reflect you and, like, what you want it to be. Because sometimes if you're doing what you want to do and it's not pleasing everybody, well, then maybe that's not your fan base or whatever. I, I don't know exactly how to do that because it's, it's very hard to please everyone. You know, it seems like with the Internet, you kind of need to do a little bit of everything so it catches the attention of 
everybody. Yeah. And you know, luck, luckily with what we do, we have a large group of people that are into small engines, so we're good. But if you're trying something new online, or you know, like if you guys are trying to get into the mini bike and the go kart world, there's quite a few people already ahead of you, but nothing's stopping you from starting something new. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, don't let oh well, cars and cameras is already there. All the other channels, like, what am I gonna do? You should still start it. I mean, like, I'm trying to start a start a uh, YouTube channel with my family. What? I mean, I, it's plug not it. plug uh, it right here. I don't have a name for it. Oh, okay, and, we'll, and I, I've we'll, got a few. We'll come I've up got with a few. I had one. Charles in charge. That one okay. or uh, dang, that's really good. Or, that's I think that one's already taken. What is it? Vl uh, vlog jamming. Okay. Vlog. No, we're not doing <laughs> vlog jamming. That's a <laughs> that's what I, I, I like that one. Too. That's what I wanted to call the channel, and it was you know it was, it was nice, but. You know, it's, you could put some pounds behind that. Yeah. You could put some. <laughs> well, and you know, it, and I, like I wanted to make it about family and adventures, you know, like what we were talking about, trying to find those old monster trucks yeah. that are retired from the 80s, doing videos on that, meeting up with local drivers or just anything. I mean, cause like we took my old truck to the second NASCAR sanctioned track in America and it's now just a dirt trail that okay. you can walk. Really? And, and it's the only I think it was like never paid. Did you put, or you put that on Instagram? Yeah, right? I did. I, did I put, saw that. Yep. I read through that and post, it's, man. It's really cool that they've got some old like forties and fifties race cars out there still with the engines in them and stuff. Just but chilling. They, yeah, just relics. You know. Yeah. That's kind of what we wanted to do with my channel is just kind of show just vlog or do whatever we're doing with the family and yeah. you know I got fish tanks at the house so there's some content you know for anybody just that's two hours tank. two hours of fish tanks just watch it yeah, I mean I that's a thing yeah oh, I, know. I have a friend yeah. who used to put that on when he was doing stuff he would just have in the background or just be fish moving around well I like, you know and anybody that has a fish tank the most interaction that you get is when you're feeding them so yeah. like that would be what I would film is some feeding them and call you know there's uh there's one dude that calls it top water action and I'm like, well, that's a great term, but I can't take that from him because he's got that. But uh, yeah. but no, that was, you know, he would always, just people would always show stuff and, and just show what's going on. And I, like, I'll just circle back, circle back to what I said before. Be yourself. Don't try and fake you know, whatever your personality or something to please a certain group, you know, just if they like you for who you are, be that way. Cause that's, that's your audience right yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, and I think that's what I've kind of done with people that really like what I'm doing. They're like, man, I really, I'm really glad that they brought you on, you know? And it's like, you know, I had one dude come up to me and he's like, you know, that comment you said, you're just a guy, you're just a usual guy. No, you're not. You're everybody's mechanic. And that was like, you don't need to say that, man. Put I, it no, on no. a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's mechanic. That's what you should do. Hi, my name is everybody's mechanic. But I'm really not that good at mechanic. <laughs> you are are on YouTube. Who do you follow on YouTube other than Derek from Vice Grip Garage? Well, um, <laughs> I guess it would be all like pretty much anybody that's into the the go kart community, like Bill Breaker Pete. Uh, we've got you know bust, busted knuckle builds. You know Rick and Brandy. They do some quality work. I mean, if you're into the vintage, you know restoration. That's the channel for you. And it's and it's kind of like you know we're into the custom builds and you know random stuff and just cobbling things together. You know you got their channel with restoring and bringing things back like the yeah. way that they were or slightly modified or you know yeah. however you want. So I'm not really subscribe to too many channels i know that sounds bad or no, good i think but we were all in that kind of same yeah, it's, page. i have like yeah. maybe three or four that i follow and i mean and really it's kind of just whatever the algorithm spits up to me you know with, <laughs> with the fish one tank yeah. ready yeah fish yeah no it's top water action so no no top water action <laughs> yeah <laughs> fish no, tank but, ready yes. and, you know and if, there, and if there's nothing to watch there's a three foot fish tank right in the living room that yeah. you can just kind of watch the outside of youtube do you like uh you binging any series on netflix's or the hbo we were recently into the blacklist oh. on Netflix, I think. Blacklist and is that the one with the father James? Yeah, James Spader. Spader. Uh, James Spader. Yeah, and, okay. uh, Ultron. Ray Raymond Reddington. I was only in yeah. for like the first three seasons, and then I think I got out. I like you're like yeah. I was only in for the first three seasons, which I am going to conservatively put at about sixty something episodes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I think two I think, seasons. <laughs> I think we're into season two, and we've just gotten distracted. Haven't yeah. gotten back into it. And, gotcha. And it's kind of violent. Not too bad, but it's, you know, with a one and a half year old in the room, we don't 
yeah. and seeing The that only stuff. episode I remember from it is one where there's a guy who melts people into yeah. soup. The, and the stew maker. The stew maker. And I was yep. like, man, this show is super dark for something that they air at like 7 o'clock on NBC or whatever. Yeah. Just makes you think mm. about everything that's going around in so the world. So what do you do to recharge? So obviously you watch Fish Tanks, you watch The Blacklist. Oh, what gosh. else do you do, man? I don't think I ever recharge. <laughs> no. I swear. No, it's, I mean, I get, we, we definitely get sleep, but with a kid and that doesn't go to bed till 11, it's, it's a little oh, difficult. 11, man. That yeah. is, so is kiddo up throughout the night? We try not to. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like if they nap too many times in the day, they yeah. don't sleep at night. So it's like Amen to that. one nap in the morning, maybe a Keep nap in the afternoon, yeah. maybe <laughs> a nap in the afternoon for a yeah. real small one. But you know, well, if, that's why you, you, when they look like they're falling asleep, you just hit them with a little bit of this. Yeah. That's basically what I do. Is I turn on, I turn yeah. on some Monster Jam, and he gets all pumped <laughs> up. Monster Jam. Yeah, you hear those like thirteen hundred horsepower blown methanol engines. Rah, rah, rah. He gets all excited. <laughs> he starts making the noise, and he'll grab his monster trucks and hold them up at the TV and move them. And I like how you're giving him like a Pavlovian response, like ringing a bell. But whenever he hears engines revving, he's just gonna wake up really yes, hard. Absolutely. No, That's it's really good. It's, he's it's gonna be an excellent fun. racer, dude. I know how that is to not have any time though, having having kiddos. So it's tough to have a side passion or project because you can't really get away from the house or no anything. and i don't have a garage and i'm not at my apartment i'm not really allowed to work on anything oh, okay yeah i think you You're can trapped. do yep i think i can do an oil change but if i take a tire off of it they might get mad at me Man. but i mean that's understandable because it's an apartment complex or whatever you don't want like derelict cars in yeah the you don't want everyone stuff. doing it no no, so, no. Yeah. well also not everybody's a mechanic yeah. so it's like not everybody is everybody's mechanic yeah. well it's <laughs> everyone has started that hour-long project and then one bolt snaps and it's three hours into youtube and all kinds of stuff yeah. so it's i yeah i have plenty of projects like that just <laughs> hanging out yeah, I, I, all of mine are on standby till uh, boy gets older and we start working on them together. Cause, okay. Because honestly, before we had the boy, me and the wife, we were building stuff together. Like, I lowered my square body with her. Oh. Yeah, we took the, right, the C10 and... I did a five and a seven drop front and rear axle flip kit and springs in the front. Nice. And it's like that high off the ground. It's, it's fun to drive in the city. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, everybody looks at you like... You want to feel the road, you know? Yeah, well, you know. And with, with a 350 with a lump stick cam and valve springs and long tubes, it just sounds good. And, and the kid, he loves the noise. Like yeah. Anytime I hit the gas, he's... <laughs> you know, it'll put him to sleep too. Oh. So that's, and that's what Jack was telling me. He's like, man, you've done something to that boy in the future. He's going to need engines to calm down. Yeah. And I'm like, white well, noise would just be engine noise. Yeah, it's like, oh, I guess yeah. I didn't ruin him, you know, if, if engines calm him down. It's, it's going to be like Jesse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something, about it, something about motors just calms me down. Yeah. It's Not like, where'd you learn to do this? Fast and Furious. You should, you should go to MIT. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you follow any kind of sports or racing or anything? No. Okay. Go no, ahead. I'm just, yeah, no, I guess as a kid, not saying there was anything wrong with my parents kind of forcing me into sports, but I feel like to help them out, and now that I'm a parent, I completely understand that baseball and football and stuff like that, it actually is kind of like a babysitter for your kid. Not saying that there's anything wrong with doing that, like dropping your kids off to something, but yeah. if you have to work and they let you go get your kid from school and then you drop them off and do something else productive, I mean, and they're with good friends and good people and they're taken yeah. care of, you have nothing to worry about. I feel like I was dropped off at baseball and football practice and I never enjoyed the sports. Oh, so man. I just, like I was never good at them. You know, like, and I felt like the little league or whatever, they do the batter lineup, I would always be in the back. And then when they would, you know, when they would swap out, you know, infield, outfield or whatever, then they'd start the batting lineup all over again at the beginning because the best hitters were at the beginning. So you'd so, never... So I would never get to hit, and I was always in the outfield. And the outfield in Little League, no one hits it that far. Yeah. So I was getting made fun of for sitting out in the field and having my glove on my head. Picking daisies out yep, there. Literally, that's <laughs> that's what they made fun of me for was picking da like picking flowers. <laughs> and I was just... Because the ball never came to me. Yeah, well, that's it's so, what you had to do. Yeah, and then now, you know, my wife's talked to me. She's like, if your son's into baseball, you need to be supportive, even if you don't like it. And it's like, <sighs> I guess I'll have to. You're right. You're absolutely right. Because if Miles likes baseball, 
then I like baseball. Nice. So. Yeah, you got to be supportive. Uh, my, yeah. my daughter told me that uh, she, I asked her what she wants to do when she grows up. She said she wants to be a princess. So now I got to figure out, I got to find an eligible prince now. You I don't need know. You to find a castle. I need, yeah, man. You, you know what castle payments are right now? <laughs> I think they're <laughs> out the roof. Actually. <laughs> they're literally out the roof. Yeah, and keeping a castle heated or cooled is Oh, it's just, a nightmare. Oh, it's, oh, gosh. In the moat, and how do you keep the alligators full? Yeah, it's like, yeah, how do you yeah, feed yeah. the alligators? Do you feed them? organic like do you feed them vegans like grass or fed peasants. or do pe- they eat peasants <laughs> or you don't feed them so they're always or you hungry. don't feed them and they're oh yeah there you go so we're getting towards the end of the show i was going to ask you a couple of random questions mm-hmm. from the hat uh, absolutely so i think there's going to be a little crossover here with the ones that i asked That's yesterday right. but uh it's all randomized so it's not like i was choosing them no uh-uh. so the first question is what's your happy place 5,000 RPM with my small block Chevy. Nice. Nice. I like Everything, that. Everything, kind of like that. Tunnel vision. The, yeah, well... I would get tunnel vision racing. Okay. Yeah, it would just, like, everything would just go like this, and it would just be left, straight, yeah. left, straight, left, straight. But, um, no, uh, it's kind of like uh, if you've ever seen Ford versus Ferrari. Yes. It's okay. like 7,000 RPM. Everything just kind of disappears, and, you know, it's you're free. Yeah. You're fully in the moment. Yep. You've reached yeah, and, Zen. And it's, you're in complete control of your life right then. Like, yeah. it's, if something happens, you know, heaven forbid, but... Like that's that's what's going on. It's just, and I don't, uh, you know, and I'm not saying go out and go fast and do something dangerous to be happy. No, no, it's just when I'm full throttle on something and it's, you know, toting the wheel or just screaming and I'm out front. It's just like nothing can make me angry right now. Nice man. Unless something really detrimental happened, but that that's yeah, yeah that's just different. That's okay. But you're going fast enough, you won't notice. No, no. <laughs> so the next one is, if there are aliens. What do you think they look like? They're amongst us right now. <laughs> okay, so okay, so first off, we're not. Gonna, I don't want to get into whether or not aliens. <laughs> yeah, exist. let me adju- let me adjust my tinfoil hat. Yeah, I was gonna. But what do you think? If there are, if there were aliens, or if you think there are aliens, what do you think they look like? Hmm, that's a that's a that's a tough question. I think they're amongst us. Okay. Yeah. They look like people. Yep. So Men you think in black style? Yeah. Okay, so they're kind of like skinny Slenderman style. Or like. uh, or we could go into the the realm of. Lizard people. Okay, so they. No, no. So we're talking about people looking lizards I, or lizard no looking idea. people. Yeah, now we're really, now we're really getting into the conspiracy <laughs> theories. Cool. Hey, but they're coming true. There you go. Okay, well, <laughs> you heard it here, folks. First, folks. Okay, next is uh, if you knew you were dying tomorrow, what would your final meal be tonight? Wow. Doesn't matter what I'm eating as long as I'm eating with my family. Damn. Yeah. Deep, man. Shout out. To Shout out to the fam. Yeah. To Mrs. Charles and, and Miles. Yeah, to, to Mrs. Charles and well, Miles Charles. And I mean, and I would I would include her parents and my parents oh, as well. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it's more about the people than it is about the product. Yeah. Got you. And I mean, I guess if I was really selfish, I would live stream it. You know, for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> this is my final minute, guys. Hey, guys. Oh, I'm so, that was horrible. This I'm YouTube, so sorry. This YouTube is going to get so many. It's going to get so many. I know. Views. Ike's podcast was... You know, pretty good, but mine's just like, oh, God. <laughs> no, you're doing good, man. Okay, so here's here's one. I'm curious about this. What is your most vivid or weirdest dream? Oh, man. That you're comfortable talking about. Okay. <laughs> He's like, that just that cut no, it down No, I no, I know, exact, I know exactly what it is. For some reason, when I was a child, we went to the aquarium, the North Carolina Aquarium. This was, like, before they redid it. And I think they still have that alligator in there. But it's this, like, 10-foot alligator that's, like, rock or something. You know, it's like, yeah. but it looks real. And it's, like, clear-coated or something. I, I don't know. It's, I know. Yeah. Anyway, but you're allowed to take pictures with it. And I think what I did was, when I was little, I climbed in its mouth. Oh. And, like, oh, sat with my belly in its mouth. And my mom took a picture. For some reason, I had a dream that I got ate by an alligator that <laughs> night. And I was going in feet first. And for some reason, I woke up. And, like, it was really happy. And I remember my parents like, you know, are you okay? And it was like, I got eaten by an alligator. That was the first words out of my mouth. <laughs> you were and still. I, I was still like in the moment, like I got eaten. Dang. Man. I, don't, I don't know why that, but when you guys when you guys ask me about the memories, well, that's I gonna that's gonna I, be the thumbnail for this. Is gonna be I'm Charles gonna and Photoshop an alligator, an alligator <laughs> with you in its mouth. Oh yeah, and it's funny because like we went back to the aquarium with my son, and you know how when you take the photos and they put the diff- you do it in front of the green screen. Yeah. yeah. They put the alligator picture up, and all the alligator's heads are pointing at my son's face. They, they're oh, like looking, gosh. and it's just like, oh god, we've gone full circle. <laughs> I got a question. 
how do you feel about going 100 miles an hour on a mini bike in, in a quarter mile? Oh, boy, would, that's... Would you do it? If you had a bike that was ready and said, Charles, just get on and gun it? I, I wouldn't do 100 the first time, but, yeah, I would definitely feel it out slowly because, I mean... Like, we already did close to 100 on go-karts that we built. Yeah. You know, okay. Ike did go over 100. Yeah. I'll make sure to tell everybody. He went 107. He likes nice. to tell everybody that. 107. That's yeah. booking it. I did only 95, but Still. I was <laughs> reeling them in, and I ran out of gas. Oh. Like, yeah. Literally the, ran out of gas? Literally, oh. the engine was wanting so much fuel, the fuel pumps couldn't keep up. Really? Refilling the carburetors. So 95 miles an hour was both carburetors full. Wow. And now that we've got fuel pumps and new stuff on it, I think I'm ready to break 100 on that. But we got to get back out to the airport. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, it was on our channel. We raced the Ducati, the 670s two-stroke cart, and then John's dad's R8 okay. out at the airport. And the, you'll see the thumbnail on our channel. But nice. that was that was pretty cool. Uh, okay. But the 100-mile-an-hour mini bike, I was hearing about the, the guys in Cali doing that. Like with the, what is it, they raced 1320? Yeah. Yeah, thir 1,320 feet. And they're crossing the finish line at 100 miles an hour with a scrub brake. And that, sometimes no helmet. Oh, Going boy. into a sea of people. Yeah, I can't. I don't, what, I don't. Yeah, with, like, yeah I, don't, I definitely don't condone that. But anybody that does it, my hat off that to is you. That is crazy. For, for my tinfoil hat off yeah. to you. <laughs> my Reynolds wrap. <laughs> no, um, I definitely would like to try it. I mean, I think our dirt drag bike might be pushing 70, 80 miles an hour towards the end of the track. But, okay. it, you know, being that we're only racing 660 feet, I guess it would be an eighth mile at Mini Mayhem. That's usually what everybody runs. There's a little bit more run out room. But the braking zone gets really tight. Oh, okay. It's Got really it. wide at the start and then the finish, but it like there's a track and then the trash and you have like this little bottle it, it, like bottlenecks down. You're yeah. like, okay, everybody get tight or slow down. I've seen a lot of bad wrecks out there, and it's not mini bikes, it's people with dirt bikes and four wheelers with no lights yeah. running out there, and it's shouldn't do that. So mm. if you're gonna if you're gonna be running with us and if it's at night, make sure to have like a headlight or something. Headlight and a tail light. Yeah. That's it's a good thing not to get rear end, you know, run yeah. in, run into or whatever. Good advice right there. Well, before we end it, I have something for you. We don't typically give people gifts. Oh no. I did give Harley a gift just cuz he asked me. I'll cover my eyes. No. <laughs> like <laughs> So this is for Miles and for you to read to Miles. I don't know if you read Miles in your books. Dude. But you're the first person to get <gasps> Little Rascal's Big Race Day. I've written this book. I've had it illustrated by my people. It's version 2. I want you to have one of the first copies of it. Thank you. Oh, hey, For no real. problem. Oh, hopefully you're able to read it to him. Hopefully you get to learn. He gets to learn all about mini bikes growing up. And that's just the first of the series. I'm going to keep going. I, ha I have an idea for you. Okay. I can't say it. Because Let's collab. Yeah, no, for real. Because yeah. there was a children's book that I've been bouncing back and forth, and I think I found the guy. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. We'll make it happen. So Absolutely. Is that, are we good, Zane? We're good. Dude, this, all right. This is the best part of my trip right Heck here. Thank yeah. you so much. So... Thank you for coming out. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thanks for yeah, th Thanks for just chilling, being cool, being an awesome guy, just being just everybody's upright, mechanic. Honest. Yeah, yeah thanks for being mechanic. everybody's mechanic. <laughs> You're super cool. Well, hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Absolutely. Oh yeah. well, I'm going to because we're here. And it's <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's not raining right now, so we're definitely blessed. Absolutely, more than blessed. And if you guys have any comments for the podcast, leave them down in the comments below. Always like, subscribe. And right on. Burn. <laughs>